Hey guys, we get jelly here. Um, so I decided I'm gonna try and do a playthrough with Chronicles of Drenagar. Um, really looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully I can get to do a lot of it. I don't know. I'm gonna be starting school up here again in a couple weeks, and the last time when I tried to do something, it was uh, it was pretty rough. <laughs> Didn't go very well, but we'll see. Uh, I have a little lighter load this time, but. I just wanted to take some time. I've really been looking over this game. I've been exciting, wanting to play it. Um, kind of a bummer. I wish I had some other people I could play it with, but unfortunately, I don't know anyone else um, that's into these types of board games. So I'm going to kind of just be doing my own thing with it. But before I got started doing the actual playthrough, I did want to just go through the characters that they have. When I do my playthrough, I'm probably only going to be using maybe two at the most. Um, I don't know if I just want to do one. I think two gives a little more variance and a little more fun, but doing more than that, I think it'd be too time consuming, uh, just trying to handle it all on my own. But I did want to go ahead and um, go over when I was looking at the character sheets and that, I was kind of surprised like how much detail they actually put into the character. So I figured the first couple of videos I would just showcase the characters that you can play um, when you're doing this game. They have different types, and you have your standard tank type, and uh, you know your DPS, your damage players, and your support players, and things like that. But it seemed really interesting to me, so I wanted to give credit where credit's due. They put a lot of care, I thought, into the backstories. Um, I'm not sure how much it'll really play into the game because the game seems like it's pretty standard no matter which character you use. But I did think it was kind of interesting that um, they did put some effort into establishing like a backdrop for these for the characters that you'll be playing, um, which they didn't have to do. I mean, in reality, they could have just, you know, thrown them out there and um, maybe some people wouldn't have cared. Um, but to me, it kind of gave gives that role-playing flavor to it. And I thought it was really neat, so I kind of wanted to just um, go over those. I'll probably do two characters this time, and then there's three characters that I'll do in the next video. Um, there's five in the base game. I do have some other ones. I don't know if you've seen the videos where I did the unboxing. I, I haven't gotten the expansion yet. Um, still waiting on that. But I will say this, out of all the Kickstarters I backed, this is the only product that I've received anything for so far so kudos to them on that some of them I backed before this one and I still have yet to see anything for the other ones but it's kind of nice so I wanted to give credit where credit's due um, this is like the main cover of the box um, pretty cool picture it's the main villain of the uh, first game who you end up I would believe eventually coming crossing paths with at the end of the base game um, so we'll see how that goes, but I did want to just start off with the first two characters. So the first character that I'm going to do, his name is Vorn. He's a dwarven warrior, as you can see. He's pretty cool with his uh, hammer there, looking all badass. Um, picture's a little blurry, I know, of the um, the model I have of him. It's, it's pretty cool, though. Again, I wish I could paint. Man, if I could paint. I don't know. I will say this game comes with quite uh, a cool collection of miniatures. Um, fairly detailed. Um, this one, you know, he's pretty cool. Um, a little weird that... Um, oh, no, I guess he does have the axe in there. I never noticed that. He's leaning on it. It's a little interesting how his axe is thick like that. It's not, like, sharp on the end. But I guess, you know, he's all about pounding things into the ground, being a dwarf and all that. So... But anyway, his name is Vorn, and I'm just going to read his backstory here real quick. Even though the glory of the ancient dwarven holds of the Omeka Mountains is long past, the dwarf clans still stand proud of their heritage. Vorn is a scion of clan, of, clan, of clan Stoneheart, one of the more traditional and influential clans today. By all rights, by now he should have been on the forefront of clan affairs, honored and respected. But Vorn will never achieve this, for he was exiled from Clan Stoneheart, and his name erased from the clan's tablets. 
Weeks ago, Vorn was leading one of the clan's expeditions to find lost dwarven holds deep in the Emeka Mountains. He was admired by many of his people. He was considered a hero and a fearless leader. After days exploring the winding paths of the earth, Vorn's expedition found itself in great time-worn chambers that indicated the presence of a nearby dwarven city of ancient times. None, however, were prepared for the I never can say this word, chitinous monsters that awaited them in the dark. Insectoid creatures that were never seen before overwhelmed the expedition. Many dwarves lost their lives in the initial attack, and Vorn ordered a retreat. He knew, however, that the creatures would follow and massacre the entire company, perhaps even reaching other cities. The warrior then made a tough decision. He collapsed the way to the ancient ruins trapping half his expedition in the other side along with his promised bride the love of his life to allow the other half to live the clan council was in uproar not only had he blocked the path to a vault of unimaginable riches he had lost half the expedition for those crimes there would be no forgiveness Vorn was cast out of the clan and exiled from kai udun to forever ponder his decisions alone it's pretty deep. Um, yeah, I kind of feel for this guy. Um, that would really suck. <laughs> it seemed like he didn't really have much of a choice, but um, boy, what a price to pay, huh? He even had to like basically sacrifice his bride to be um, in order to save the rest of the people, and for all that, he was basically punished. Um, which is kind of weird when you consider what the outcome would have been if he wouldn't have done that, but I don't know. I guess that's the price you pay. So I thought that was pretty deep, and that was the one I read, and that's what made me want to do this because when I was reading it, I was like, wow, they actually put like some thought into this, and he's kind of uh, makes him a, a troubled hero, you know? I mean, making those type of sacrifices, and now he's all on his own. So kind of a bummer. To do the right thing and then pay the price oh. like that um, so that's the warrior and then the next one is Maya she's a human ranger and uh, this her story goes like this Maya comes from a humble village at the edge of the human territories far from the human kingdoms and close to unexplored lands the villagers of Maya's home were sturdy folk grown used to the hardships and challenges of the frontier however even they were unprepared when tremors opened a new passage to the bowels of the earth, unleashing new monsters onto the surrounding area. Maya's village would have fallen if not for the help of the Azure Robins. The Azure Robins were a group of hunters and fighters coming from the poorest human communities in Darren. They lived on the edges of civilization, fighting the monsters most couldn't fight, or that the mortal kingdoms would not fight. To the latter, they were little more than outlaws and lowlifes living at the outskirts of civilized society. To the poorer and more isolated villages, however, they were true heroes. The Azure Robins helped wherever they could and asked for nothing more than hearth and food as they moved about the wilderness. From the day they saved their village, Maya knew what she wanted to become when she grew older. Today, Maya is a cunning hunter of the Azure Robins helping communities at the frontier survive the harshness of the wild. So her story is kind of cool. Um, not nearly as deep as Vorn's, in my opinion. Um, but it's still kind of cool to see that, you know, um, this group of this clan, or whatever you want to call it, that helped her out, she decided to join them and join their cause and help other people uh, whenever they were fraught with danger or dealing with things. Um, you know out of their control so those are the first two characters Maya and Vorn um, like I said there's three more that I'm gonna do in a follow-up video um, so hopefully you enjoy this um, I have a lot of fun making it uh, I hope it uh, let me know what you think um, if there's anything that um, you want to like say about them or you might have ideas I'm all for it I don't know how it's gonna go when I do the playthrough I don't have the greatest setup um, but I'm going to do what I can to try and make it entertaining for people to watch and um, see how bad I can screw up. Because I love these games, but I'm not very good at them. Um, but anyways, 
Uh, my name is Wicked Jelly. Thank you for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care and stay safe, okay? All right, bye-bye.